Hey guys, welcome back to Chickadee Farm. You might notice that I am not in my own kitchen today. I actually am down in Arizona visiting my mom for my birthday, which is also today. So today we are going to be making my birthday cake, which I tend to go a little overboard and my mom has, and, and husband have both informed me that this cake is kind of ridiculous, but we're gonna do it anyway because it's my birthday. Anyway, so my mom is also going to help me. This is my mom, Kathy. Say hi. Hi, good to see you. So she's gonna help me out today. And the plan is that we are going to do an caramel apple cheesecake cake thing. Extravaganza. Extravaganza, yes. So the plan is that there will be a layer of like a spice cake on the bottom and then a layer of apple pie filling basically with caramel sauce and then a layer of cheesecake and then another layer of the apple pie filling stuff another layer of the spice cake and then i'm haven't decided quite yet how i'm going to cover it some kind of frosting either there's this pour over caramel frosting which sounds really interesting but might be slightly challenging or i might do a caramel swiss buttercream swiss meringue buttercream or just a straight buttercream. I haven't figured that out yet. One of those will be covering it. And then we're gonna have a little cute little apple rosettes on the very top with a caramel drizzle. So I'm excited. This is probably gonna take all day, but that's fine. <laughs> um, we are gonna get started with the spice cake and the cheesecake first so they can get cooled. So let's get to it. All right, so we are going to do this applesauce spice cake. It is from this cookbook called Lee Bailey's Country Desserts by Joshua Green. That name sounds really, oh no, photographs are by Joshua Green. You'd think it would be by Lee Bailey. Yeah, probably it's by Lee Bailey. <laughs> anyway, so it's an applesauce spice cake and the, the comments about it says it remains moist and fresh for a long time, especially if stored in an airtight container. And in fact, the flavor seems to improve the second day. Well, it's gonna be eaten today, but that's fine. Um, so all it calls for is butter, sugar, unsweetened applesauce, flour. I'm not going to add the pecans or the raisins. If I was making it just as a regular cake, I'd add the raisins, but I feel like that doesn't go really great with that caramel apple. Mm -mm. Yeah. Um, and I don't like nuts ever. So we're not adding nuts. Um, and then ground cinnamon, nutmeg, mace, baking soda, vanilla extract. So pretty simple. Uh, we should get the oven preheating to 325. Mama, if you want to do that. Okay. And I will grab the butter. Oh. My mom's house is really warm. <laughs> the butter is very soft. I think I said I, we're down in Arizona, um, and even though it is the end of September, the temperatures have still been in the hundreds. Well, it, at 100. Yeah. So... Yeah, hot. Is this, Mama, is this still the KitchenAid that Dad got you for graduation? No, that's the one you got me when we moved here. Oh, okay. Never mind, it's not that one. <laughs> but we are definitely a KitchenAid family. Oh, yes. In fact, my stepdaughter, Quinn, just got gifted a very cute pink KitchenAid for her graduation present from her boyfriend, which was kind of cool. He didn't even know the family tradition around it. So, um, all right, I need two cups of super fine sugar. I think we can just use regular sugar. We'll use that for the frosting. Okay. I believe that super fine sugar is just a sugar that has been, um, ground up slightly more. It's not quite powdered sugar, but like somewhere in between the two. But I never use it or have it, so. I believe the idea is that it just um, mixes up with the egg better. Yeah, and um, dissolves quicker. Mm -hmm. So two cups. And then this just needs to Yep, we're going to cream these together until fluffy for about three minutes. That 
That look is nice and fluffy. So the next step is we need to sift together flour and the spices. Oh, where's your baking soda? That's right up in the corner cabinet. Mm -hmm. In the mm -hmm. white um, that I just went by. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. one, that container is just baking soda. And we need three cups of flour. And I am going to be good and actually sift it, even though honestly I probably wouldn't normally. It'll help mix in your um, spices too. That's true. This might be a little overflow for this guy. <laughs> Nope, it takes three. Nice. All right, a teaspoon of cinnamon. Cinnamon. Okay, I'm actually gonna do a teaspoon and a half because I like my spice cake to be spicy. And in place of the nutmeg, because I'm not a huge fan of nutmeg either, I'm going to use ground cloves probably not an entire teaspoon, which is what it calls for of the nutmegs, probably half a teaspoon. Cloves can be overpowering very quickly. Oops. And then ground mace, which I don't know that I've It's ever almost it. like nutmeg. Oh. It's got its own special oh. flavor. Yeah, it does have a little bit of that nutmeg. You find it in a lot of Scandinavian sweet bread recipes. Huh. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is a half teaspoon. I don't even have ground mace at my house, so I'm glad we're doing this here. Yeah, that <laughs> Um, and the baking soda. Baking soda, one and three quarters. This is a half teaspoon, so. One. Three quarters, and then probably salt, right? Weirdly, it doesn't actually call for salt. Hmm. I'm gonna add it, just a little bit. I feel like even sweet stuff needs some salt, so I'm just gonna do quarter teaspoon. Get this guy sifted. I feel like the sifter is older than I am. It probably is. <laughs> <laughs> I recall using this as a kid when we baked. All right, so it says to fold in the flour. I'll just put this on a very low and Oh wait, wait, ah, stop. Everything I was supposed to do is see, uh, yeah, applesauce first. Oh. It's fine, I only put a little tiny bit of flour in. All right, so we need two cups of this. So the applesauce is actually what's gonna make this cake stay really moist for, be really moist and stay moist for a long time. And it says that this won't completely mix in and that's totally fine. It probably looked really weird and curdled actually. Give the size a good scrape here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it looks kind of disgusting actually. <laughs> Let me give you a closer look. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's kind of this weird yuck. Anyway, I'm sure it'll be fine once we put the flour in. All right. Now I think we can stir in the flour. So normally if you were doing raisins and nuts in this, you would take out a quarter cup of the flour and use it to mix the nuts and raisins in it um, so that they um, 
stay suspended. And they the, don't stick to each other. Yeah, they don't stick to each other and they don't just dump to the bottom of the cake. Um, but we are not doing that, so we're just gonna put all of the flour in and then add vanilla and that's it. It's actually a pretty simple recipe. vanilla extract. And we'll do one more scrape down of the sides. You don't want to over mix your cake batters and quick bread batters because you don't want it to get tough. Also it keeps the air holes from yes. forming inside. And this is super thick. That is good enough. I actually thought it would be darker than this. That looks good. It does. All right, let's get these into pans. All right, say that again. So you have a trick to do this. It's always been a problem to cut the circles for the Yeah, pan. I mean, you can, you can obviously just pull a square out and Cut it on top and draw a circle around it and do it that way. But still, first do my other trick of crumpling it up so it's easier to work with. Then all you do is you start folding it into triangles. They're that small, but and then you just put it in the sense so the point is in the center of your pan, like that, and just cut it off. Hopefully, that just works. No, it didn't work. <laughs> well, it was a great idea. It was a great idea. <laughs> that worked now. I just haven't done this in a while. You have to double the paper and then, and then the you're done. All right, so that must be we're it. gonna try that again. Yeah, we're probably gonna edit that out. No, they should see everything we're trying to do. <laughs> okay. All right, so now we're going to fold it in half. Yeah, maybe then in quarters, and then do your turning off? Probably. Because you only got one quarter yeah. there. So. Yes, that's how you do it. Okay. Then, put it in the barn. The point in the middle of your pan and cut it. Oh, let's see if we got a circle this time. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right, it's still a little big. Um, so that's just something that you get better with as you. Uh, I don't make cakes very often in round pans, so trim them a little bit more off the edges here. There we go. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. Don't forget the needs. All right, I'm gonna spray the bottom of the pan because it will leak around the edges of this too. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to get these out easily. So you do spray the paper also. I've always wondered about that. I do because um, you pull it off, right? So mm -hmm. it just, um, makes, it easier just makes it easier. So this recipe actually calls for putting this in a nine inch tube pan, but since we're making a layer cake, that clearly wouldn't work. And this is a lot of batter, so I have no, no qualms that it will be plenty for two, where are these, eight inch, nine inch pans? Nine inch. Nine inch. A 
all great artists are messy. <laughs> smoothed out and they will go in the oven as soon as it is preheated. It's ready. Okay, great. And bake for, well it says, this is for the tube pan, so that, that would be really thick. Um, it says to bake for an hour and a half, which is that we will not need that. So let's start at like maybe 20 minutes? Oh no, that's 30. 30? I'd say 30. Okay, mm -hmm. right. They were in there for 45 total, but they look amazing. Can I grab that for you, Craig? Show you guys. Aren't they beautiful? And they smell so good. Yeah. So um, next is the cheesecakes, and the oven needs to be start at 350 for that. So we will get that started here. those to cool for a bit on the wire rack and then we will turn them out and um, then let them cool completely because you can't frost them with anything when they are warm. But for the meantime, we're going to get started on the cheesecake. All right, time for the cheesecake. So this, because it's going to go in between cake layers, we are not going to have a crust on it. So again, I'm just using the um, parchment paper round and I'm gonna spray this pan really well. This will probably be the most challenging part of this cake is getting this cheesecake out of here without it falling apart. And this cheesecake recipe is super simple. Actually, it's amazing how mom and I were just talking about this. Cheesecake always seems like it's such a fancy dessert, but the reality is it doesn't have very many ingredients, at least when you're just making a plain cheesecake, and um, really doesn't take much effort to make. So, uh, and that is this recipe here that we're using. This is off of the, my favorite, as you know, the Preppy Kitchen, it's just his plain cheesecake recipe probably helpful to because I forget a lot uh, to remember that you need to soften the cream cheese with ah, yes. Eggs, it, yes. it mixes up much smoother indeed I have often tried to make cheesecakes without softening mm -hmm. the cream That's cheese a... and it ends up lumpy yeah. <laughs> so yes so the, uh, we are starting out with three uh, eight ounce blocks are these eight ounce yeah yeah eight ounce blocks of cream cheese You also want your eggs and sour cream to be at room temperature. Again, it just helps make everything get mixed in much more smoothly. All right. All right, so we are going to mix just the cream cheese together until it's nice and smooth, and then we will add the sugar and vanilla and salt then the eggs. Since this is very nice and softened, that did not take long. <laughs> All right, we need a cup of sugar, I believe. Yep, a cup of sugar and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Let's put the sour cream in very last. Actually, we're supposed to add the vanilla as well. So let's do that. I was just thinking, using a spring, if I had a nine inch spring form uh, pan, you wouldn't have any trouble getting your cream cheese out of that. 
So that would probably be the way to, to do that if you're going to use it without a graham cracker crust or some crust. Yeah, for sure a springform pan would be the best. I, I just put in two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Um, and I don't even think I have a nine inch. I think mine is an eight inch. So um, yes, springform pan, spring pan would be the easiest. <laughs> All right, we're gonna just add our eggs one at a time and make sure they are fully incorporated before we add the next. half cup of room temperature again, sour cream. And simple as that, we have cheesecake batter. All right, this needs to go in the oven. I believe it was the first 15 minutes. At, yeah, first 15 minutes at 350, and then we'll reduce to 300 and continue baking for another 30 or 35 minutes until the edges are slightly puffed and the center wobbles a little bit. Turned the cakes out and they came out beautifully, no sticking. So I'm just gonna move these over here because now I am gonna get busy on the caramel and mom is peeling apples and getting those ready for the uh, apple pie filling. So yeah, let's, let's do caramel. Think this big of a pan is a little bit of overkill but uh caramel definitely does boil up so you want to make sure you have lots of room all right so our recipe for the caramel sauce also comes from the preppy kitchen and we are going to start with uh, one and a half cups of heavy cream And then we need one cup of light corn syrup. And we need two cups of packed light brown sugar. Mom, we might want to replenish your brown sugar when we go to the store. Okay. Two cups of brown sugar. And a tablespoon of vanilla extract and a half teaspoon of salt. Wait, actually, I think I don't add the vanilla until, yeah. But we can do the salt. We're gonna put the salt. Oh, and our five tablespoons of butter. And a teaspoon of salt. I actually probably will add a little bit more salt to this um, once it's done and I can taste it because I do want a salted caramel um, taste flavor. Uh, yeah, five tablespoons of unsalted butter. Now we're just going to turn the heat on this and I'm going to dig out a candy thermometer because we want to bring this up 
to 230, between 235 and 240 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, see if I can figure out mom's stove here. Front, there we go. Put it on about medium heat. So we are going to cook this and stir it until the butter is melted. And then we are going to brush down the sides of the pan with a wet pastry brush just to get all of the little particles of sugar off of the sides of the pan. And then you don't touch it except to keep brushing down the sides of the pan a couple times with the um, pastry brush until it reaches temperature. So no stirring, just leave it alone because you don't, caramel's pretty persnickety and it can crystallize before you know it. So you just wanna leave it alone to do its thing. So we're gonna turn this down now to uh, 300, was it? Yes. And how long was that, 30 minutes? Yes, yeah, so let's start, it said 30 to 35, so let's start with 30. Okay. Got it. Thank you. I will say that this um, using brown sugar is a little bit of a cheat uh, for making caramel. I think it just makes it a little bit easier, a little, a little more forgiving because of the molasses, that's extra molasses that's in it. Um, but typically to make, like the professional way to make caramel is starting with white sugar and letting it actually caramelize. And then bringing that up to temperature, then you add your cream and butter and then you bring that back up to temperature to the 240, 235, 240. Um, and that's how you do it. And that's really where you can get into trouble with the caramel is in the um, browning the sugar stage. And there are lots of recipes out there for doing it that way. Last little tiny bit of butter is melted. So then you just basically, you just take your brush and you scoot it down. Actually, I'm gonna grab a little cup of water here. Dip it in. Like I said, you just wanna get all the little bits of crystallized sugar that might be on the walls of the pan all the way down in there because that's what can encourage the um, caramel to suddenly crystallize um, is if it touches crystals that are up on the side of the pan. All right, we're just gonna let it do its thing here now and just scrape it down with this uh, a few more times during the process. And it should take, um, it says five to 10 minutes, but in my experience, caramel always takes way longer than they say. So we'll just keep a really close eye on it. Um, usually when it gets to about, it takes forever to get to about 200. Well, it goes up to 200 really quick and then it takes forever to get to like 220 to 25. And then it shoots up again really quickly after that. So we'll just have to keep a close eye on it. All right, let's get the apples done. All right, so the apples actually are coming finally from a different website that I've just completely forgotten the name of. I will put it in the description. Um, and all we're doing is basically making an apple pie filling. So mom has peeled the apples and um, sliced them. Um, I think we probably don't need all of them, maybe three quarters of them. Okay. So we can get those in the pan, and then we need brown sugar, cinnamon, salt, water, butter, and cornstarch. Okay. I've got 
have to, do we put all of those things in at the same time? Yeah. Okay, I'm putting in the butter. Not the cornstarch and the water. I'm not putting in the cornstarch and the water. <laughs> Don't put the cornstarch in the water. I wouldn't think of it. <laughs> How much sugar? I just did a cup. Oh yeah, brown sugar. Brown sugar. Okay. Did you say cinnamon? Uh, two teaspoons of cinnamon. I'm just gonna add two tablespoons of cornstarch to this little guy here, and then two tablespoons of water. And this basically is just gonna make a slurry that will help thicken the apples so that when we put them on the cake, they don't just splooge all over the place. Apples have a tendency to splooge. <laughs> Slide is probably the better word. No, I like yours. <laughs> Is that it? Salt? Did you, oh, did you put salt in? Not yet. Just a quarter teaspoon, I'll just eyeball that. And we'll wait for the um, butter to melt and the apples to start getting juicy before we add in this little slurry. So we need to turn it on. Oh yes, you should turn it on. <laughs> Medium? Yeah. Okay. Mom's front burner here has an issue, so uh, we cannot use it. It likes to overheat. All right, and you can see the caramel here is starting to bubble away. Oh, look at that, yeah. And we're at about two. Oh, it's really raising up. Yes, yeah, so this is why you want a big pan. Oh. Um, is because it definitely goes, it gets really, I don't know what the word kind is. Kind of foamy at the top. Yeah. Um, but let's see what I was gonna say. Uh, we're at like 215-ish. And you want what? 235 to 240. Okay. So we have a ways to go. All right, I actually added a splash more water to this, like maybe not, not even a tablespoon, maybe a half a tablespoon, just because it wasn't mixing. It, was, it wasn't enough water for two tablespoons of cornstarch. Now this is bubbling. We're just going to pour this in and give it a little stir and then let it cook for maybe five, 10 minutes more just until the apples are starting to get soft and this is thickened up. All right, you guys, we are at 2.30 and it's gonna go up really quick now. So I'm gonna keep a really close eye on it. And in the meantime, our apples, get a little bit better look here, are nice and they're the perfect, I, I didn't want them to be soft, like when you do with an apple pie. So I'm gonna give them a quick taste test here. Mmm. Mmm, perfect. Nice bite to them still, a little crunchy. Um, mmm. And the sauce is delicious. All right, so getting super, super close. And then as soon as this is up to temperature, we are going to add the tablespoon of vanilla. And then we are just gonna let it sit here and cool until uh, we need it. And our we did add another 10 minutes to the, oh my goodness, okay, you guys have to check this out. It is coming up over the edges of the pan. <laughs> it's going to be a very thick cheesecake. Anyway, um, it probably, it has five minutes on the timer right now, so it's probably gonna need maybe five more. We'll see. Um, but definitely was not done at 30 minutes, not even close.
and per our tradition, mom is actually getting some of the dinner prep ready. So uh, birthday tradition for us is that whoever's birthday it is gets to choose the cake and the dinner uh, for the evening meal. And one of my absolute favorites is called chicken paprikash. And I believe it's a recipe, isn't that from dad's mom? Hungarian. Yeah, it's a Hungarian recipe. Uh, my uh, dad's mother, my grandmother on, on my dad's side, um, was it was Hungarian and she brought a lot of their recipes with them and they have survived to this day and chicken paprikash is one of my absolute favorites. So that and a creamy cucumber salad and I cannot wait. All right, where are we? Well, we are at 2.35 almost. And you can definitely tell I mean, some people do caramel by eye. I I don't trust myself well enough to do that, but you can definitely see the bubbles are, they're much bigger now. It's not quite so foamy. And you can kind of see the dark around the edges of the bubbles. It's a really good indication that it's, it's close to the right temperature or at the right temperature. All right, it is just slightly above 235. So I'm going to add, uh, I don't know where my tablespoon went, but we can guess. Tablespoon of vanilla, and it is going to bubble up like crazy. I believe we can stir that in. Stirring vanilla. All right, where did my stir that go? We are going to take this all the way off the heat so it doesn't keep cooking and get too hot because then we'll have caramel candy, hard caramel candy, and that is not what we want. Mm, smells so good though. All right, isn't that pretty? All right, so we are just gonna put this back on the back here and let it cool, let this cool, get the cheesecake out of the oven, it cool we're probably gonna put that in the refrigerator because um, it'll take a while to cool and then while we wait for all of that we are going to go into town and get my birthday Starbucks I can't wait all right so we will be back when it is time to start assembling the cake see you soon okay guys we are back the cheesecake and the cakes are nice and cool technically we were supposed to let the cheesecake cool uh six, six hours. hours i can't remember if it was at room temperature no i think it must have been in the fridge but we don't have that kind of time so we put it in the freezer it looks beautiful though and it now is nice and cool and now i am getting ready to make our salted caramel swiss buttercream frosting that is what i decided to go with it just seemed a little less um work intensive than the pour over car cannot talk the pour over caramel frosting recipe and um the swiss buttercreams just tend to be a lot lighter in um kind of body there's doesn't seem to be as much sugar in fact there's only 10 tablespoons of sugar plus whatever caramel we put in so um it's just it's just lighter and this cake is going to be pretty sweet and heavy so i thought that would be the best bet so I have the um, some water under here, just at a simmer. Should I turn that down a little bit? And I'm going to put 10 tablespoons of sugar, and I am going to stop talking so I can count. Seven. Stop it. Twelve. <laughs> Okay, so that is the sugar. And then we need four egg whites at room temperature. I'm actually gonna use five because a couple of these eggs are pretty small. So we're just gonna separate these guys. That's not what I wanted to do, that's okay. Wait, you want another container? What, yeah. Oops. No, I will, I will just, um, put them in here like I planned and put the yolks in here. <laughs> okay. 
Madeline has not liked all of our kitchen shenanigans for the last several days and not getting attention herself. Actually, put these guys in here. Now I am just going to whisk this until uh, the sugar has all dissolved into the egg whites. Except we need to do this again because I've already cooked some of my egg whites and we don't want that. All right, try this again. Oh my goodness. Real life folks, real life. Well, that's why mothers are handy. They've had a little experience doing the exact same thing you just did. Yeah. Yeah, you could have warned me. <laughs> I wasn't sure what you were doing. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to whisk the egg whites and sugar together, and then we will put it over the simmering water. All right. Try this again. So the idea is to make the sugar melt. Yes. And will you beat the, the peaks while it's in the hot water? No. Oh, you'll hit, put it into a mixture and mix yeah. it and beat it. And then you beat it, it says about 10 minutes because you want it to come all the way down to pretty much room temperature. Okay. Before you add the butter. And uh, she said the way to test this is to kind of feel it between your fingers and you shouldn't feel any grains of sugar, which there still are. So we will keep going. Just a little tiny bit, but I definitely could still feel them. Turn this guy off. All right, and we're gonna get this over to the mixer. All right, so we are just going to pour this in the mixer here, and I have the whisk attachment on it. You can do this with a hand mixer too. You could even do it by hand by hand, but I wouldn't recommend it. It would take forever and you would be exhausted. And you could get bursitis. Yes. <laughs> And we're gonna uh, whisk this on high for probably about 10 minutes. So you want it, like I said, have stiff, glossy peaks and be pretty much at room temperature. All right, so we are adding our butter now. And we're just doing, it's a cup and a half of butter and we're just doing it a chunk at a time. Lovely, fluffy buttercream. And now I'm just gonna add some caramel to it and give it one more quick mix. And we should be good to go. And this won't have a really strong caramel flavor. I just want to have a very light. All right, let's give this a little taste test. Mm. Delicious. If you've never had a Swiss meringue or a French meringue buttercream, I highly recommend you try it. Because like I said, it's, I mean, it has a lot of butter and sugar in it but it just is light. I, I don't know really how to describe it. Um, it just, it feels light on your tongue and not super sugary. So, but yeah, you can taste the, the caramel, just the hint of caramel in it. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, 
So now it is finally time to assemble the cake. Hey! All right, we have uh, moved to the garage of all places because it's actually cooler in here than it is in the house. <laughs> so, uh, and I just think with all of this stuff, cool is better because it can get very slippery. So uh, the first thing, mm -mm. well, no, the first thing we need to do is the first layer is going to be one of the cake layers. So let me just check down here and we're gonna put a little dollop of the frosting down so it doesn't slide around too badly. And the first cake. Luckily, these cakes actually baked really flat, which is great so we didn't have to cut off the dome. All right, I had to take a quick break to get a piping bag because we want to do an edging of um, icing so that the apples stay in place on the cake. It doesn't have to be much, just a little bit. And you know what, if you don't have an actual piping bag, you can use a Ziploc bag with the corner taken off. Or a piece of parchment paper and yep. formed into a cone. That's a little trickier because you kind of know how to make it into a cone. Doesn't have to be pretty either. All right, the good thing is I think these apples are pretty thick, so I don't think we need to really be too concerned with it. I'm just going to take half of this apple mixture. Oh. And then we're going to drizzle a little bit of our caramel. We're going to have way too much caramel. We should probably only plan these when there are a lot of birthdays. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Celebrating maybe five birthdays at once would be a good idea. And then I'm just using these Malden sea salt flakes. They're really these, um, well, they're like little flakes, like almost like snowflake type salt. And just put a little tiny bit on top here. Now comes the potentially tricky part. Yes. This is our cheesecake. You're equal to the task. And it is beautiful. Right now, that might be the most beautiful it is for the rest of the night. There. Oh, good job. Look at that. And we'll just peel that parchment off. Tap it. And then very carefully. <laughs> Whip it onto the cake. <laughs> oh boy. Oh la la la. There we go. I think this, um, there's a little bump in the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're literally, well, as you can see, we're on the washer and dryer here <laughs> doing this. Mom, would you run and grab me a towel? Mm -hmm. Get this somewhat centered on here. And then we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put another ring of the frosting, the rest of the apples, another drizzle of caramel, then the last cake layer, then we will frost the whole thing. There you go. And then we will put this one on upside down so it has the nicest sharp edges. A little press there. Okay. What do you guys think so far? All right, next we are going to just put a really thin coat. Oh yeah, I 
um, offset spatula or the I have no offset frosting, but I have oh, a frosting spatula. Okay. And this is called a crumb coat. And then we'll put it in the freezer for a brief moment to get all nice and hard. So the nice thing about um, these meringue buttercreams is they harden up really nicely. Um, which means you don't ever want to serve them cold. But it makes it really quick and easy to be able to get a nice smooth coat on. Nobody's going to dream about all the layers that are inside. No. It'll be a nice surprise. Yeah. Well, except that everybody in this house knows. <laughs> Nobody's going to be surprised here. No, but if you were to make it for uh, an occasion. All right, we are gonna put this in the, very carefully, in the freezer for like two minutes. All right, cake is back out of the freezer. It is nice and hard now. So we will just put now a full coat of frosting, whatever we have left here, on it. And then we'll put a little dribble of um, caramel on the top and hopefully drip down the side artistically. Don't don't quote me on that one. <laughs> and the little apple rosettes, while I have the greatest of intentions, I think are just not going to happen. And that's okay. That's going to be okay. Frosting now. Actually, your dribbles will kind of cover in the, uh, those things, so it'll help. Yes. All right, and we used almost all of the frosting, so that's kind of perfect. And then for my dribbles, oh, I need a spoon. I'm gonna run and get a spoon. I spoon. For the um, caramel, I'm going to put it in uh, just this little Ziploc bag and I'm gonna cut a tiny little corner off of it. And I've never done this before. So it'll be a first time for all of us together. So um, actually, we didn't see this, but this caramel actually split a little bit, which means that the butter was separating from the caramel and kind of just leaving an oily slick on the top of it. Um, so I looked it up and it's pretty common that that happens. Usually, apparently, it's because it's had some kind of quick temperature change, which we didn't do that, so I'm not really sure why it did that. But um, the way to fix it is to add a tablespoon of really hot water at a time and then just whisk it until it um, comes together again and it worked perfectly. So if you ever have caramel that splits on you, that is the way to fix it. I think this should be enough. All right, wish me luck. Good luck. <laughs> Be grippy enough. 
Oh, looks like it's doing it. Oh, it's working. Yeah. It's not super artistic, but that's okay. No one ever claimed to be a professional here. No. We're just doing this for fun. And actually that is kind of the joy of doing things like this that are seem ridiculous and a lot of work, but you get to experiment and like come up with something cool and fun. You have a new skill that you're working on. Yeah. And you know what? And if it doesn't turn out beautifully, it's okay. There's some, you need some right here. Now I'm going to try and do a swirl on the very top. Oh, that already failed. All right, that's a piece of art. Good job. Did you want to put sprinkles on? Oh yes, I do want to do a little sprinkle of salt. pick up the pieces I drop. All right, I think we're good. Let's take a picture. <laughs> well, we will definitely also um, show you guys what it looks like on the inside when we cut it open. But I think overall, I'm pretty darn happy with it. Yeah. Like I said, not perfect, but a lot of fun to make and I got to do it with my mom which is always the best part yes all right so I nice being with you yes I'm it's I love spending time in the kitchen with my mom it's probably one of my favorite things to do mm -hmm. so we very much enjoy it and these kinds of things are the most fun to do together. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And like I said, we'll give you a quick peek of it when we cut into it after I blow up my candles. Hope candles. you guys, oh. oh, maybe no candles. That's fine. We don't need candles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, like I said, hope you enjoyed it and that you'll join me again next time. Everybody have a great night. Bye. Bye. And here it is, guys the inside of the cake. It was amazingly delicious and actually wasn't super sweet. Rich, but not super sweet. It was turned out fabulous.